School Superintendent Carlton Washburn made Winnetka a national model for progressive education. Washburn replaced grade cards with goal cards. Students learned history by building models of ancient cities, and they did independent research and held group discussions about their findings. In 1940, Washburn got a chance to design a school building as innovative as his ideas. He hired Perkins, Wheeler & Will, who worked with the acclaimed architects Eliel and Eero Saarinen to design Crow Island School. Each room was flooded with light and painted a different color so kids couldn't get lost. Everything was kid-sized, furniture, blackboards, door handles. Each room had a bathroom and a private exit to an outdoor courtyard. The building influenced school design all across the country. Out behind Crow Island School, you'll find the world's first jungle gym. Once again, Carlton Washburn had something to do with it. He got the idea from Winnetka resident Theodore Hinton, who had built a bamboo prototype for his own kids. Hinton thought three-dimensional play would help kids visualize a fourth dimension. In the end, Hinton said his kids never gave a hang for the fourth dimension, but they liked climbing around on the frame. So he and Washburn built this one out of iron pipe in their spare time. Hinton went on to market them under the name Jungle Gym. Of all the great public schools in Winnetka and on the North Shore, probably none is more famous than New Trier Township High School, built in 1901. For many years, New Trier has been at or near the top in test scores, although in 2001 it dropped to third in state achievement tests behind Chicago's Whitney Young and Northside Prep. New Trier's athletes and teams have racked up 77 state titles, more than any other school, and the music department has won top honors from Downbeat Magazine and the Grammy Awards. Famous alums include Charlton Heston, Rock Hudson, Anne Margaret, and Donald Rumsfeld. By the way, New Trier Township was named for Trier, Germany. Many of this area's first settlers were farmers from that region. Like the Schmidt family from Koblenz, who built Winnetka's very first house in the 1830s, on a site that was once a Potawatomi village and is today the ninth green of the Indian Hills Country Club. The house was moved here to Tower Road in 1917. Schmidt descendants continued living in it until the last one died in 2001. The house now belongs to the Winnetka Historical Society. Education wasn't the only progressive thing in Winnetka. Essayist and social reformer Henry Demarest Lloyd began setting a progressive tone there in 1878. He convinced the town council to practice his philosophies of direct democracy, and Winnetka built a municipal power plant in part because of Lloyd's outspoken arguments against monopolies. Years later, Winnetka successfully fought off Samuel Insull's attempt to make the little power plant part of his Commonwealth Edison empire. The leader of that battle was Winnetka's Harold Ickes, who was FDR's Secretary of the Interior. As head of the WPA, Ickes was responsible for lowering the railroad tracks in Winnetka and building the Skokie Lagoons. Henry Demarest Lloyd and his wife Jessie lived in this Sheridan Road home called Wayside which they could afford because Jesse's father was the wealthy Chicago Tribune publisher William Bross. At Wayside, the Lloyds often hosted notables like Jane Addams and labor activist Eugene Debs. Lloyd and his father-in-law had a major falling out over Lloyd's support of the Haymarket anarchists. Winnetka progressives achieved maybe their greatest victory in 1965 when Martin Luther King accepted their invitation to speak on the Winnetka Village Green. King argued for open housing on the North Shore, telling the polite crowd that African Americans lagged behind due to discrimination, poverty, and ignorance. Despite Winnetka's progressive rhetoric, efforts at open housing here and elsewhere on the North Shore would be largely unsuccessful for many years to come. The Village Green, where Dr. King spoke, was donated to the city more than a hundred years ago by Charles Peck, who developed Winnetka in the 1850s with his partner, Walter Gurney. Peck's wife, Sarah, gave Winnetka its name. She said it was a Native American word meaning beautiful land. 
One of the most impressive homes in Winnetka is W. Clement Stone's Spanish-style lakefront estate built in the 1920s. Stone, who passed away in September of 2002 at age 100, preached positive mental attitude. He built a small insurance agency into the company that eventually became the multi-billion dollar Aon Corporation. Stone was a supporter of Richard Nixon and a famous philanthropist whose foundation gave several hundred million dollars to promote education and child development. This house is one of the most famous in America because it starred in the movie Home Alone, written and produced by John Hughes, who attended Glenbrook North High School. Like Steven Spielberg, Hughes draws inspiration from his suburban upbringing. He made many films on the North Shore, including Sixteen Candles, Uncle Buck, and Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Winnetka's A.C. Nielsen gave the TV networks a way to track their success, the Nielsen ratings, and the man who famously called TV a vast wasteland, Newton Minow, has lived in Winnetka and Glencoe. Minow was President Kennedy's head of the Federal Communications Commission. Kenilworth has the...